Today I'll be talking to you about a novel calibration method for hyperlocal measurements of air quality using low-cost sensor network. Here is a brief outline of my talk. So I'll go into the Bridge London static network. Then I'll talk briefly on how we see pollution source. Then I'll introduce the concept of local and regional signal and how that is exploited in our cloud-based calibration method. And would look at questions around how can we transfer this calibration between sensors with an illustrative example and also demonstrate that with the data, actual data from the Breed London. We'll look at how well this calibration is working by comparing with um, physical calib calibration method and we'll give you a summary and also some take-home message. So are there new and better ways to exploit local sensors and slash sensor network? And the answer is yes, there are. Um, before we delve into that, so I'm just going to briefly talk about um, the Bridge London Static Sensor Network. So we are using about 100 uh, plus AQ mesh pods measuring NO2, NO, CO, ozone in about a dozen of them and also PM. Here is a picture of <coughs> the AQ mesh and here is a map of the location of the sensor of the greater London itself. So the key difference between this network and every other network out there, especially the reference network, is that we are using one minute data in most cases and we have CO2 measurements as well. And including CO2 and making this high resolution um, uh, type of measurement is key to a new concept of uh, data analysis, which is looking at the emission ratio. So um, how are different pollution seen? So uh, here is a, an animation just trying to describe how this signal we are measuring at the receptor point can be broken down into its individual constituents. So you start off uh, with what we call sources that are local to the receptor point. In this case, these are spikes. These are emissions that are very, very local to the site we're interested in. Then on top of that, you can also have signals that are periodically um, seen as variable near local background. And this could just be um, a signal from uh, multiple dispersed sources. And finally, you would have another level of signal which we've tagged the regional background and that is signal that is coming into your measurement domain, in this case, London, and it will be coming upwind to your measurement site. So the final measurements you are making at any receptor point would be a summation of the local signal, the near signal, and also the regional signal, which is what we've summed up in this third panel here, which is what you're seeing here. So the key is to is how do we separate this signal and then exploit them, which is what we we'll be discussing in this talk. In order to introduce the concept of local and regional signal, the first thing we can do is to actually go back to the existing um, conventional air quality network that we have out there. In this case, we are looking at reference network in London. This, bear in mind for those that are familiar with this kind of measurement. These are reference calibrated sensor network and they are often reported as hourly averages. Because they are calibrated, it allows us to, I mean, this offers us an opportunity to extract the background signal. And that is what is represented in the red, red uh, plot here. And you can see how that compares to the ensemble of the hourly measurement across 89 sites. But now, can we also do the same using fast measurements? In this case, we're actually showing, um, trying uh, an attempt to extract the local signal by using a single sensor, but fast measurement from a single sensor. So the idea is to extract a minimum or a percentile over a defined time window. And once you do that, then what you get relative to the one minute data is this background, which is shown in blue, superimposed on the actual measurement, which is shown in green. And this station is actually in Cambridge. So the previous slide was showing measurement from London. So, so far, no surprise that we can do that. But the key thing is when we go to the next slide. So in this slide, what is the surprise? What we've done here is to now superimpose the background that we've extracted from one minute data against 
the background that we've extracted using hourly calibrated reference network, which is actually about 80 kilometers away from the one minute single sensor site. And remarkably, we are actually getting good agreements between this background signal, even though these sites are about, you know, sometimes can be tens to hundreds of kilometers apart. And what do we have for the Breed London? Even though what we've shown here in blue is just the background extracted from one site, and for the Breed London measure, uh, uh, deployment, we actually have one minute data across all the 100, net, 100, 100 sites. And we can actually exploit this in our calibration method. So this is just a brief uh, outline showing what we are trying to do with the sensor network calibration method. So we are going to be utilizing or using one minute measurements to determine the regional signal as we've shown uh, from the previous example that we can actually do that. Um, so why is this important? The whole concept is that if the regional signal can be extracted at individual sites within the network, this signal should be constant across all the network, at least most cases, and it should vary significantly in time. So essentially we need species that have detectable background. So the whole idea is that all the sensors should see the same regional slash background signal. And if you have an uncalibrated network, any deviation that you, between this background will be down to difference in sensitivities and calibration parameter. And that's what we're trying to exploit in the remote calibration mental transfer. So this is just a recap again of um, the method, but now using an illustrative example. So the key thing is to select a period where we have Metrology minimizing the local signal and also remove outlier. So what we have here is just the background sig signal from two sensors as an example. And what you can see here, there are some different outliers which are due to local signal. So we can statistically remove that. And what you get is just this uh, signal which would be uh, representing the actual regional background. And because this should be common between the two sensors, we can actually do a regression between that and come up with a calibration parameter gain and offset. In the example we have shown here, relative to sensor one, sensor two is less sensitive. So we can always come up with a correction parameter. And this is just a recap of the different signals. So what we're interested in is to try to extract that red background statistically, excluding all the near signal. So this cartoon just summarizes how we go about doing this calibration methodology. So the first thing is that we do is we co-locate a gold pod with a reference site. And the reason why we do that is so that we can extract the gain and offset, because bear in mind, these are local sensors. The factory calibration sometimes are not as uh, representative of what is in the true world. So we get those gain and offset from this very short collocation. So the next thing is, because we have a continuous measurement across the whole network, we identify a time window where we can extract the background from the one minute data set. Bear in mind, this is going to be uncalibrated background. So the next thing then is to now take this gold pod that we've extracted, is going to be part of this background extracted and calibrate or correlate or relate every other background to that gold pod. So what that gives us is relative calibration to the gold pod, but this is not yet the final calibration. So the next thing then is to now transfer the reference calibration of that gold pod onto this relatively calibration that we extract from the baseline to the gold pod. And once you've done that, you come up with a final pod calibration parameter and we also have we can extract errors from that so this in summary we are hanging all the network to a single reference site because that's where we are, get, we are getting the gain and correction offset for the gold pod that we're using so how well do we, uh, does this work so here we're just showing an example of uh, the conventional method which is a physical collocation 
So in, within this period of these deployments, 40 ports were we managed to calibrate using physical collocation. This is moving calibrated ports across within the network. And each calibration roughly takes seven days. And we have about half a dozen gold board. And in summary, the root mean squared uh, for this calibration method gave us around 3.37 PPB for NO2. When we compare that to um, the calibration using the cloud-based method, because we can do this across the board, we managed to calibrate 105 ports at the same time. And out of that 105, we've extracted the same 40 port that were uh, calibrated um, using physical method and compare the performance. And we are getting a mean root mean squared error of around 4.1 PPP in the hourly average world. And this shows that the method is actually well because it's very comparable to physical method. And we have also done the same for PM 2.5. And again, the root mean squared error we are getting between physical collocation and cloud-based measures are very, very comparable. So in summary, and what are the take-home message? The cloud-based calibration method is comparable to physical collocation subject to some measurement protocol. So yeah, it definitely works. We've used local sensor system in this example presented, but it doesn't necessarily have to be limit, limited to that. So uh, the key thing is that we need fast response measurement because in order to extract the baseline, like from the example or illustrative example, example shown, you need um, fast response measurement. And the question is, why are the conventional regulatory method not actually sampling at higher resolution? And we've shown the method just for two species, but it can also be applied to other species that has detectable background and in and other locations. And what I've shown here is NO, which conventionally doesn't have a background, but we've noticed in some locations, like in um, Beijing, China, where you are, in winter time, you can see elevated background, which is what you see here for six different sensors. And that's, and that's it. Thank you for listening. And these are some of the partners that have been involved in this project. Thank you.